everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to give you a look at some of the books that I've taken out from the library recently and what's been on my TBR. I made a March TBR for middle grade March, but I didn't really talk about anything else that I was interested in reading in the month of March that's not middle grade. Plus, since then, I've accumulated a bunch of library books um, with this impending COVID-19 closure of the library that I expect is going to happen very soon. I've also just stashed away some books, and I don't think I'm the only one from the amount of people that have been coming to the library in the past few days just like getting their hands on whatever they could because they don't really anticipate being able to come into the library very much for the next few weeks. My library is still open and it's really frustrating because I do believe we're the only ones left in pretty much the entire state of Colorado, at least of all of the big library systems that serve hundreds of thousands of people and have hundreds of staff. The board is meeting tonight and hopefully they make the right decision to close our library. It is a very unfortunate situation but it's something that we need to do to ensure that we do not spread this virus as much as possible. We need to stay home and it's hard but we also have lots of e-resources, e-books and e-audiobooks that you could listen to from the comfort of your home plus the books that you've already stashed away. It's been a really interesting past couple of weeks and it just feels really strange and it feels like uh, staff members are really the ones like putting their feet down and saying this is what we need to be doing. They really wanted us to be doing story times this week and to go on with these camps that we had because our schools are out of school for spring break. It would have been a very, very misguided decision if we went through with it. So I'm glad they finally listened to us about that and stopped story times. But now the next step is they need to close the library. So hopefully that happens and there's still lots of work for me to do that I could do without you know being with the public. I'm going to try to keep my channel up as normal as possible. I also have uh, a wrap up coming up of the things that I've read so far for middle grade March. So that's coming up. I'm still going to be reading for middle grade March. I feel like I'm taking just a little bit of a break and I'm reading a few adult books that I'm about to show you, but I do want to finish reading my middle grade March TBR. So hopefully that will be coming in the next few weeks. Please let me know in the comments how you all are doing um, and kind of what the community response has been in your community, how things are going, are libraries still open, are your schools closed now, what is everybody doing, are people going out to restaurants and bars and things, um, I really think we need to stop and only really go out when we absolutely must like to get groceries. Let me know how that's going with you and we will get through this. Let's see what I've been reading and what I have out from the library that I'm excited to get to soon. One thing that I didn't mention in my middle grade March TBR obviously because it's not middle grade but I did finish reading recently is Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGinnis. This is her new book, a survival kind of stuck in the forest and trying to get out of the forest after she stumbles drunkenly and gets lost in the forest. I'll talk a little bit more about this when I do a, a wrap up for it. I didn't love it as much as I've loved the two other Mindy McGinnis books that I've read. As for what I'm currently reading, I am currently almost done. I am almost done with this chunker of a book, Long Bright River by Liz Moore. I've been hearing really good things about this. I had already been on hold for the audiobook, so at seeing it in my library, I was like, yes, I grabbed it. So now I have the physical copy that I've been following with um, the audiobook and it's really really good. It's a very slow kind of procedural revealing of twists to very slowly. A lot of the things I could see coming but um, the way that it's written I just really really enjoy it. It's nice and slow paced and it's basically a character study and seeing how things have changed from the then and now. But it's about a woman who's a police officer and she is trying to find her sister who is unfortunately um, facing addiction issues and it's hard to keep track of her. So they're trying. she's trying to find her. All the while there are women who are in sex work that have been murdered in this area and so she's just like so scared that this is gonna happen to her sister as well. I've never read any Liz Moore. I've tried to read The Unseen World before but I do really like her style. And then the one that I'm gonna go on that I've already started, I was kind of not in the mood for fiction during one of my walks with my dog and I decided to pick up a memoir. So I started listening to Open Book by Jessica Simpson. Um, I'm only maybe an hour into the audiobook, so not very far at all. So far it does feel really honest, more honest than 
there's the devil that I was speaking of. So I was listening to this one. I didn't really expect her to be this honest so far. Like she really has gone through alcohol issues and I really didn't know that about her. So I'm excited to learn more about this. There has been one part that I was kind of like questioning her talking about her supposed Native American background and kind of like tall tales that have been told through her family about them having some Native American roots. But so far, all the other things have been really interesting, just how she thinks about motherhood and how, you know, she's kind of going to go through with some sort of recovery or therapy for her, the issues that she has been facing. I really grew up with Jessica Simpson, watched her show all the time, listened to her music all the time. Um, and it's pretty amazing how successful she has been as a businesswoman. It's pretty cool. One thing that I found from the pile of books that people brought from PLA and that is the tourist attraction. This one I'm excited about because it sounds like it's about Alaska and I would love to read more books set in Alaska. I've been keeping track this year of what states the books that I'm reading are set in and I find that really fascinating. So I'm excited for this one. I do believe it's going to be like romance and I am looking forward to reading more adult romances this year. I read quite a few good ones at the end of last year. That'll be a fun one when I'm trying to just exit my brain and exit social media and just get lost in a romance. Let's talk about why a I only have one Oh, I forgot about my audiobooks. Hold on, let me show you that first. So I have two audiobooks that are adult books that I'm kind of waiting to listen to because I have to finish Long Bright River first. And one of them is My Dark Vanessa which, hey, that's my name. I've heard kind of mixed things about this book and I'm kind of going into it with a little bit of trepidation. I do know that it's been dropped by Oprah's book club. It's kind of weird that I feel like because of all of the situation with American Dirt, Oprah just is not having any controversial reads <laughs> anymore, it seems like. So they dropped this book, which is kind of like, whoa, that sucks for you, publisher and author. And there have been people saying like, this is similar to another book. I really don't know if those are like completely found and accurate um, depictions of, you know, people who, I don't know, feel like there are parts of their books that took inspiration and then this book was written. Especially comparing like American Dirt to this. I, I don't know if this is a true controversy like American Dirt was. I do know that it's a very, very dark read. I haven't heard enough from people that I watch or, you know, read their reviews to have any idea if this is going to be good, bad, or anything. So I'm just going to go into it and just tell you what I think about a very, very hyped 2020 book. And then the other one that I'm really excited about is Saint X. And this is by Alexis Shotkin. Shitkin. This has been compared to The Girls by Emma Klein, which was one of my favorite books that I read a couple years ago. It's supposed to be a story that looks into true crime depictions and looks into the depiction of women in general. It's about a woman who is very young when her sister disappears on a family vacation and they can't find her. And then the story becomes like super tabloid news. It's like a huge mystery of nobody being able to solve. As she grows up, she becomes obsessive to pursue the truth of what happened to her sister. So it sounds very captivating. I hope that it's very good. I hope that it's done tastefully because I could see how that could go really wrongly. Let's talk about the YA book that I have. I just put this one on hold for the audiobook, so I'm excited to follow along. Um, this is most likely by Sarah Watson. I think another one that I saw on Chelsea Dolling Reads channel. This is a story about four friends. These four friends have each other's backs through love, breakups, stumbles, triumphs, and one one of them is going to be the president of the United States later on and you're trying to figure out, I imagine, which one it'll be. This is written by the creator of The Bold Type on Freeform, so that sounds interesting and again I'm gonna listen to it hopefully. Let's talk about one middle grade book that I just got that I had put on hold as a new release but it didn't come in time for my middle grade March TBR. That is Linda Sue Park's Prairie Lotus. This is a historical fiction book and I found that really interesting, the setting. So it's in the Dakota Territory in the late 1800s, which I don't know if I've read any middle grade set in the 1800s. And it's a girl who is half Chinese. The people in this area don't really know Asian people. Um, it offers a fresh look at a long established view in history, right? Like there's not really many Asian Americans 
in 1800s literature, historical fiction literature. So that is what Linda Sue Park is trying to give us here. So that is exciting. I'm hoping that I like this one. Let's talk about graphic books because I have a lot. This book I've been really looking forward to and I finally saw on the shelves. It's Queen of the Sea. I heard about it from the NPR concierge books that they did for their best books of 2019. From my understanding, it is kind of like a medieval sort of it's the early years of Queen Elizabeth I of England and it's interwoven with 16th century convent life. So it is an alternate history to transport readers to a world of secrets, intrigue, and thrilling adventure. I just really love the art. It looks like watercolor. You would think by now I'm, I'd be really good at telling you all of <laughs> the art terms, but no, I'm not. Another one that I've had out for a while is Mooncakes. And this is by Wendy Zhu. I wanted to read it, then I ran out of time and somebody had it on hold, so I had to return it. But again, anything about, about witches, I'm, I'm so down for. So this is what the art looks like inside. It's two friends who have a slowly rekindling romance, investigating dark supernatural forces. Another one that I have, which I'm really sad <laughs> because I was supposed to see this author last weekend, but it was canceled again because of all of the coronavirus fears. It's Jean Luang Yang's Boxer. His new book, Dragon Hoops, is coming out uh, tomorrow, I believe, March 17th, and I'm really excited to read that one, but I had never read his Boxers and Saints series, so I checked out Boxers, and hopefully this is another one that I'm going to get to. His books are really imaginative, like the setting and the time period that he focuses on. It looks very similar to American Born Chinese, but it's not really autobiographical in any way. It just looks like historical fiction, really. Set in China, 1898. So look at me, I'm just reading historical fiction up the wazoo. It says foreign missionaries and soldiers roam the countryside, bullying and robbing Chinese peasants. He does a lot of magical realism, and if I like it, I'll pick up Saints as well. Another one that I had on my five-star TBR prediction is Book Love by Debbie Tung. I loved her book, Quiet Girl in the Noisy World, that I read at the beginning of last year, and it just looks like short comics about books and loving books and I'm sure it'll be really relatable and sweet which is exactly what I'm looking forward to from Debbie Tung. A book that I'm super excited about. These are two more that came from PLA. My coworker knows that I love Lucy Nicely so she picked up Stepping Stones for me. This is not being released till May. It's going to be a middle grade graphic novel and it's not I believe based off of Lucy Nicely's life at all so that is really exciting. Brings to life a story inspired by her own childhood and a journey of unlikely friends, sisters, and home. So it's her dealing with her new stepsister and her insecurities that she has in this new family because her mother is just remarrying. And the inside definitely looks like Lucy nicely. So I'm excited to get to this one. And then another one from PLA um, that I had on my TBR and my coworker had no idea that I was looking forward to this, but thought that it looked like something that I would enjoy. That is Dancing at the Pity Party, a dead mom graphic memoir by Tyler Federe. This is going to be coming out in April and it focuses on um, what it's like to grieve from someone who has gone through those kind of situations. I love the art style. That's definitely what drew me in. I read a lot of books about grief and I'm also looking forward to that. This is what the inside looks like. And I am excited to get to this one and I'll let you know what I think about it. Oh yeah, one that I was super looking forward to and I'm so excited to get to is The Fire Never Goes Out by Noelle Stevenson. She is the one that drew and put together Nimona, which I really enjoyed when I read it a few years ago. This is um, a graphic memoir of her life, which looks really exciting. The inside is a lot simpler than I anticipated. So this is kind of what the pages look like, very simple. It definitely looks like her style and definitely like her lettering, but I did not expect it to look like this. Um, so that is kind of exciting that it's not really what I anticipated. I'm excited to get to know more about Noel Stevenson through the years. And then the last graphic book that I got, I did not anticipate being this thick, but it's The Plain Janes. I forget where I first heard about this. Mostly I saw that it had a foreword by Mariko Tamaki and I was like, yep, that's it, I'm in. So there's all of these misfits. One is the Brain Jane, one is the Theater Jane, one is the Sporty Polly Jane. They have a shared name and frustration with the adults around them and they form a secret club to fight suburban apathy with guerrilla works of art scattered around their town. Doesn't that sound awesome? This is what the inside looks like and it's so packed with stuff. Oh, and there's green on the back. So I'm going to read this and I will let you know what I think about it. 
um, hopefully I get completely sucked into it. So that is it for the books that I currently have checked out from the library that you all haven't seen yet that I'm hoping to get to in the next few weeks. Oh, who was calling me? But my branch manager telling me we're closing at 5. Okay, so I'm going into work from 12 to 5. Actually, really good news and I'm happy to hear it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you and your family are safe during this time. Definitely let me know how you're doing in the comments. Hopefully books will be that escape for you as they should be for me. Books usually are that way. So thank you so much for watching again. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.